Buff Nation, what is up? Welcome in to DMVR Buffs Primetime. We are presented by the American Raptors. Love that. If you didn't get the the ticket you wanted as an elite athlete, check out the opportunities at Infinity Park. Rugby just may be your next ride. Check out AmericanRaptors.com. My name is Jake Schwanitz. My guy Andre Simone is joining me. Yeah, we man. are uh, we're flustered and we're ready for the weekend. Friday vibes to <laughs> the max, <laughs> and I love it. Yeah, yeah. Last show mm. of uh, 2022, could it be? It is. Uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll I don't see. know. You never know. I, I don't know what to expect much often anymore when it comes to this show. We just right. kind of roll with the punches. Uh, what's up, everyone? Saeed in the comments. How you doing? Jimmy, my guy. What oh, is up? Yeah. Chase, Zach. Oh, yeah. Wallow. Like and what subscribe. Is up? Like and subscribe. Hit that Come thumbs on now. Uh, today, we're going to kind of look back and just reset everything a little yes. bit. A lot yes. has happened. Um, I've a gotten that feels necessary. Yes. And I've gotten a lot of DMs from people about scholarships asking about uh -huh. uh, current CU players who is worth talking about from last year's team right. that will be on next year's. The people are worried. They are worried. And we're going to try and alleviate those worries and talk about all of that. And uh, I don't know, just going to 2023 ready for whatever that year is oh, yeah. going to throw at us. Oh, yeah. What's your next big date on the calendar? Because this is another calm before the storm moment. Yes, it is. Um, February just, 1st, I think. Yeah. Uh -huh. Signing day. But then, I mean, transfers can happen at any time. So stay on your toes. No rest for Jake and Tiff <laughs> and everyone else involved with this production. I'm glad no. uh, <laughs> glad to just be filling in. Um, <laughs> that's really, really outstanding stuff. Uh, hey, it's it's Friday though. We're happy. It is We're Friday. Happy. We love it. Um, let's get into it then. Yesterday, it. while I was trying to travel, there's another date, January 13th. The recruiting dead period ends. Recruits can enter the or uh, not enter. That's going to be huge. They actually. can officially yeah, yeah, visit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so I'm sure we will see a another massive recruiting weekend at some point in right. Boulder. Right. To the news though, uh, we had two transfers commit yesterday. While I was trying to traverse the American mountain range. Yeah. Uh, Deep in the heart of the Rockies. <laughs> yes. Love yes. that for you. Uh, yeah. We start off with Jeremiah Brown, former JSU Tiger and linebacker. Jeremiah Brown commits to Colorado. He is the sixth JSU player to follow Coach Prime to CU. Last year, Brown had 30 total tackles, five sacks, and one forced fumble. Another front seven player. Joining the buffs. Yeah. Adding more uh, more linebacker help. Actually, a few different uh, kind of noteworthy linebackers transferring to the Pac-12 um, that I think we might get into a little later. Mm -hmm. And so you, you got to kind of keep up with the Joneses there. Yep. Um, and another front seven guy, former Fresno State defensive lineman Leonard Payne commits to Coach Prime and CU. Uh, the last two years, he hasn't been super productive, you know, year in, year out. But the last two years, five and a half sacks combined. Uh, he is six foot three, 315 pounds. They are getting big. They need that size. They need that size. As and veteran into. size. Yes. You know, it's one thing to get an 18-year-old with a sloppy yes. body like this. This is at least a kid who's been in a strength conditioning program for a couple years and is able to... Uh, you know, just add some beef up front. Yeah. Add some LBs. Plug and play. There you go. Um, that's honestly it for the news. That question right there, the Amazon series. Okay, guys, we are going to talk about the Amazon series on Monday. We are giving everyone Mark your calendar. these two days and the weekend to watch it. Um, and then we will be right back here. Ryan will be back here. You can join if you want, I guess. I got to <laughs> catch up. I need to... I need to mark my calendar. I got to watch Coach Prime on Prime and then watch the Primetime DMVR Buffs show recapping of that. Of course. That's triple Prime. Yes. I think that's wor a world record for chance. It's Prime Time for a reason, prime baby. Prime Time for a reason. <laughs> Love this. Yes. Primeception. That's and a look, great 406, one. 406 uh, goalie telling us it was so good. Um, 
The documentary is going to get us recruits. A lot of recruits. I've seen that a lot. Um, I'm excited to dig into it tonight. Um, Such let's a get genius in genius marketing mind. Man. He's he's amazing, man. Yeah, yeah, he knows what he's doing. He knows yeah. exactly what he's doing. Um, yeah. Let's get into the Colorado roster, though, please, and try and tell you guys who is worth looking out for that was on this team last year. Yeah, that is going to be on this team this year. We'll go position by position. Um, scholarships right now, as it stands, they are at eighty-seven. They are over by two. But as I've been saying the last few weeks, guys will leave. Um, undoubtedly. Undoubtedly, for sure. Let's get into the roster. Quarterbacks. JT Shroud was coming back. He was their leading passer last year. Um, Transfer out of Tennessee. Yes. Um, always kind of a backup. Always kind of the, uh, the guy you go to when the game gets out of hand and he can get stuff done. He surprisingly doesn't win the quarterback competition last year i mean if, okay we can get into this because <laughs> i don't know i still don't understand what the hell that was <laughs> right because he seemed like the better option but somehow did not win that competition yes carl drell started brendan lewis week one yeah uh for the first half jt came in the second half and then jt started the next week against air force which was just a complete disaster yes then the yes, minnesota game JT fumbles the ball on the first play, and Brendan Lewis comes in. Then, oh, McCown comes in at the end of that game. You can see how this year is going to be quite different than what yeah. we just went through. Um, last year, JT Shrout, 44% completion, 1,220 oh yards, seven touchdowns, eight interceptions. He is a senior going in. Of course, Shador. He's a junior. Drew Carter is also on the roster. He threw four passes for the Buffs last year. Um, yeah. They were all eyesores. Most likely to not be on this roster come spring game? You said it, not me. Drew Carter. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask you that for each <laughs> position. you okay. got to thin out this <laughs> roster. Um, so you've got your veteran back up in Trout. You've got kind of your clear starter in Shadur. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, a few 20, 2023 signees that can yep. be developed and be be there long term mm -hmm. in a couple of years exactly and then the guys that you see in italics are uh walk-ons they do not have a scholarship so so jt listed as a walk-on right now no no he's he's oh he's bolded, italics bolded. italics yes, yes thank you thank you thank you um colton allen walk -on yes at quarterback he's a walk-on on to running back of course dylan edwards coming in you can see him there in the 2023 signees section Last year's re leading rusher was, I believe, Alex Fontenot. Um, it was actually Deion Smith. So Deion Smith's still yeah. on the roster. He will be a senior next year. Um, a guy who had a few injuries. Uh, the scary situation against Cal. Yeah. And just, I mean, last year was just weird. Whatever was going on with the yes. quarterbacks was even weirder with the running backs because almost every week it was a different guy. Uh, Jaylee Stacks, he is a handful. He's a big boy. Uh, Sean Lewis loved those big backs in that kind of pulling gap scheme stuff that he was doing at Kent State. So he's going to be there. Anthony Hankerson's a dog. He was a true freshman last year, dealt with some injuries, came in at times and had some great games. He only had 274 rushing yards on the season, uh, only three touchdowns. But uh, again, at times he looked like the best player on the field, and then we just wouldn't see him for two quarters. Right. Uh, Victor Venn, a recruit. He was a freshman last year. He was hurt all year. He didn't get on the field. So we'll see what we get from him. Heard good things about him, though. Should yeah. be a talented running back. I mean, this room is extremely talented. Yes. And you've got a nice little mix as well. I think this running back, that running back room is on the short list of top three best position groups on this roster. Probably the best, honestly. I mean, Better than wide receiver? I mean, yeah, outside of Tyson and Montana, there's there's not much. Well, but I guess it depends where Travis is, huh? Well, if Travis is the wide receiver... Oh, I, I thought you meant... So going into this year, best yeah. positions? You're talking about last year. I was talking about last yeah, year. Yeah, 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 I got you. Um, this no, year, no, yeah, turned the page, bro. It's all about next year. I mean, running back was one of the strongest positions last year. If, it's, if that moves down going into next year, that's a good thing, I think. Because that means other positions got better, obviously. Right. 
Um, right. It's up there, though. It's one of the more talented groups, I'd say, on the team. Um, the comment, Trey Sanders, we'll see, man. I haven't heard much about him since he entered the portal. Yeah. So he was a former five-star guy. Oh, Alabama. his his high school tape was unbelievable. Yeah, like big back, shifty, really talented. It sucks. These injuries suck, man. Mm-hmm. And it, it, Coach Prime strikes me as someone who's pretty pretty cognizant of injuries. Oh yeah, and how that impact. Like I don't think he's chasing anyone who's, mm-hmm. you know, well that um, and like character. I mean, Denver yeah, Harris was a good guy, point, good point, good point. Uh, five-star cornerback from last year's class that was in the portal. A lot of people were talking about him maybe coming to CU, and I don't even think CU really expressed that much interest. Right. Um, moving on to the receivers. Yeah, it looks pretty well, strong wait. now. Uh, who's What's most up? likely to leave of that running back group? Uh Maybe stacks get shuffled out. Um, Which I hate because he's the big back of yes, the bunch. But Hankerson runs with power, too. He does, but he, he's kind of smaller. He is. He's a smaller guy. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe uh, odd man out, man. Maybe Hankerson or Venn then. Maybe just one of the younger guys kind of gets get lost in the shuffle. Right, right. I mean, both are from that 2022 class. Mm-hmm. Tough spot to be in. Right. And Van, I mean, he's a smaller back, and now you've got guys like Edwards. You know, that's that's going to be an uphill battle competing yep. with, uh, with a, a top recruit like that. Yep, absolutely. On to receiver. Uh, Jordan Tyson is the headliner of this group. Yeah. He was their leading receiver last year. Of course, he tore his ACL against Oregon literally as he was hitting his stride. At the end of the season, finished with 470 yards, four touchdowns, 22 receptions. Yeah. Averaged 21.4 yards per catch. He was a big play waiting to happen. That's insane. In just a disastrous passing offense. Yeah. Let me repeat that. Disastrous. It was bad. You guys have no idea, if you weren't here last season, how bad that passing offense was. And then shown some juice in the return game as well. Mm -hmm. Yep. Absolutely. He uh, had the big touchdown against Arizona State. That uh, was late in the fourth quarter that really brought CU within a fighting chance to win that game. They obviously didn't end up winning that game. Uh, but Montana Lamonius Craig, he was the guy who had the touchdown, uh, the crazy touchdown in the Cal game that delivered their only win of the season last year. Yeah. Um, he's more, flashed at times. More hyped of the two freshmen coming into the season, wouldn't you say? Uh, Montana? He wasn't a freshman, but yeah, like he was looked right, at right, as right, the guy. Right. Like, right. Right. He was expected the to have a big season. We were excited yes. about. Yeah. Um him and Chase Soul is another freshman from last year who's expected to have a big year. He got hurt early on. We didn't see him uh after the first handful of games. Of course, Jimmy Horn Jr. from USF in there. I do wonder if he's more of a return guy though. He was all AAC returner. Um, right. World class right. speed though right. was a track star. Yeah, these two groups, especially the guys they're bringing in, uh, and I mean receiver and running back, kind of undersized. Mm, yeah. Like, obviously, yeah. really maximizing speed, and that's exciting. And Prime knows speed, and Sean Lewis knows how to get speed out in space. But it's interesting, and it's kind of a nice mix because Tyson has length. Like, mm-hmm. Tyson's fast, but he runs with a certain smoothness to him. Yep. Montana's got size, too. Mm-hmm. Like Montana's a grown man, dude. Montana is, if he could figure it out, he could be impactful on this year's team. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he showed in flashes last year that he right, can. Right, He was, just to go on Montana Lamonis Craig, the second leading receiver on this team, 23 receptions. So I believe he led the team in receptions, actually. 359 yards, though, three touchdowns. Went over 100 yards in that Cal game, but really, really struggled um well the whole as you said the whole passing offense struggled last year indeed indeed yeah um looking at the rest of the guys though i don't know man uh there's some dogs coming in yeah even more even more i mean look at the freshman adam hopkins omarian miller yep four-star guys asad wasim uh harge onavu page we watched their highlights over the last few weeks those guys look like they can make a difference um so ty robinson grant page you got to have a big summer 
Yeah. There's a, this is a room that can be thinned out to mm-hmm. make room. For sure. On to tight end, Seydou but Traor. Lots of youth, lots of talent. Probably the most talented of the groups, of the position groups on this When you roster. factor in Travis Hunter, I think so, yeah. He's kind of the swing vote, huh? I mean, I've been saying on this show he should play more wide receiver. I know he's probably going to end up playing both, uh, but we'll yeah, see. Yeah, why not? Does yeah. Jimmy Horn start? I don't know. That's a great question. As I said, I think I see him more as a returner at this point, but um, we just talked about the depth of this receiving core. I think anyone is up for grabs. You expecting a lot of four wide receive- four wide sets for Sean Lewis? Just trying to think of what I remember watching. I mean, they did go spread fairly often. Um, a lot of like eleven personnel, yeah, I think. Yeah, right. So more three wide. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, they like to split the tight end out, I think, too. And what a our, trend. Our bro, next you, guy, you a pro at this? Or our what? next guy, Seydu Treor, coming in from Arkansas State, uh, was one of the best tight ends in the country. I believe he was like third or fourth in tight end receiving yards last year. Certainly top five. Yes. Um, he looks like he's going to be the starter. Looking at what we have, Caleb Farrier, he got hurt last year. He is the son of Christian Farrier, former NFL tight end. Yeah, um, Buffs legend. Yes. Eric Olson made some plays at times. Austin Smith. Um, Louis Parise- Passarello, I don't think we saw very much. But uh-huh. um, uh, This is a young tight end room, and yeah. I don't know if there's necessarily fat that needs to be trimmed out of this room. It's just a lot of shaping guys and developing. Yeah, and I mean, obviously, uh, one of the biggest losses in losing Russell. Yes, you Brady know, Russell. A, yeah. a very stable outlet and a guy who could kind of bring a certain edge, you know, an upperclassman who got it. Um, and his versatility, his usefulness as a blocker and in the passing game will be missed, I think. And, uh, yeah, they, they're going to have to figure out Sadu's best role, you know, is kind of that flex tight end is mm-hmm. where I would start. And you want to kind of bring Fario along because if not, you might be mi- you might right. be missing someone in this tight end room. Sadu's got size though. He can play like the full Y, I think. Um just going through the stats, Eric Olson only had five receptions last year. Uh Fario only had three and Austin Smith only had one. Yeah. So improvement. Extremely green. Yeah, improvement is gonna be needed across the board. On to the offensive line. Um, from this list from 247 Sports and Buff Stampede, it doesn't really list out positions, t- tackle, guard, center, so it's all just a hodgepodge there. Yeah. Um, but the guys to highlight that are coming back, Van Wells at center was all freshman PFF selection for center last season. Uh, Gerard Christian Lichtenhan, Tank as we call him, Massive 6'10", 315 as a Insane. freshman last year. Insane. He started, I don't know, halfway through the year. Um, wasn't bad. Yeah. Saw a lot of progression from him. He received a lot of praise from coaches, too, so at least you have two pieces on the offensive right. line to work with. And uh, young pieces. And young pieces, yeah. played at the Pac-12 level. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I mean, tank, man, just being able to hang on a... Uh, Power five field at that size means you've got something. Well, and then Sean Lewis's offense always has these big tackles and everyone pulling around. You get a big 6'10", 315 guy wrapping around, leading him back. Exactly. Whew. Yeah. That's going to be exciting. Uh, Savion Washington is from Kent State. Right. I think it's safe to pencil right. him in as the starting right tackle. Um, you may even want to use Penn for that. Who else do we have? Uh, Tyler Brown comes in from Jackson State, of course. Isaiah Jada from Snow College or Southern Utah, one of those two. I can't remember which. Uh-huh. Uh, but he was a South Carolina commit, flipped to the Buffs. Landon Beebe from Missouri Valley, I believe. Um, so you the, you have some veteran guys coming in still. Yeah. Uh, Luke Eckhart didn't really – he played a little bit, I think. Alex Harkey we didn't see much of. Uh, Travis Gray I don't think we saw – much of yet either and then hank zelinskis coming in as a freshman he plays center yeah i i don't know that you want to thin out this room so much but i do think you could have uh some extra additions be made yeah i think uh 
just with the nature of this room, already 14 guys under scholarship <clears throat> that are currently on the roster, some guys just aren't going to play, and it's probably just going to be at that point, writing is on the wall. You should probably look elsewhere if you want to play college football. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. On to the defensive side of the ball. Same thing as the offensive line. It's just kind of a hodgepodge here of everyone on the defensive line. Jalen Sami is a big fella. Um, basically kind of played that nose tackle, one tech, three tech last year for yep. the Buffs. He had some big plays. He had a forced fumble in the um, Air Force game that kept CU in the game, at least for the first half. He had 28 tackles. Three tackles for a loss on the season, the one forced fumble. He's probably your biggest or best returning defensive line prospect. Naeem Rodman, um, he's going to be a senior. Wasn't a good year last year for Naeem. Uh, I have to scroll down to find his stats even. Only 18 tackles, yeah. 0.5 tackles for a loss. Um, but two guys who have played at the Power 5 level. And then it's, again, a bunch of transfers. Marshawn Nealon from Western uh, Western Michigan. Shane Cokes from uh, Dartmouth. Taij Alston from West Virginia, I believe. Leonard Payne Impress, man. Uh, from Fresno, who we just talked about. So those sophomore guys. Aaron Austin um, was someone who was talked about a little bit uh -huh. coming into the year last year. That's really it, though. Yeah, you've got some size. You've got some veterans with all the transfers. Still some work to be done here. For sure, for That's sure. That's why those, like, Valdosta kids are important, you know? Yep. Like, having those freshmen to come in and develop. Those and are 24 guys, some... though. We got to wait. Oh, shoot. Yep. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Well. We'll see. There's still time. There's still time for players surely. to come in. Yeah. Um, Outside linebacker now. I mean, Devin Grant was on the roster last year. He's someone that's assumed that was assumed to take a big leap coming into this next year. But now Jeremiah Brown from Jackson State on the roster. Right. Um, Tajay McCoy coming in as a recruit. Uh, Gustav, I think, played a bit. I don't think he did much in terms of actual stats, though. So, yeah, outside linebacker. Could probably use some help and uh, maybe a little trimming. Feels like one of the weaker groups yep. thus far. I mean, now, they've lacked a pass rush for years. It's been, a, it's been a minute. Can Levante Bentley play a little outside? I think he's pure off ball. Really? Okay. I think so, yep. Okay. So, yeah, you... Jeez, this, this, that outside linebacker group feels like thus far the group that needs the mm -hmm. most work well then we go to inside though and there's some guys i think that could maybe maybe move out over on the outside uh -huh. uh, and stand up um aubrey smith owen carey owen carey we talked to him just a few weeks before uh the season ended and he said that he's basically willing to go wherever outside or inside uh -huh. um so he's kind of a chess piece there morgan pearson uh we watched him, Ryan and I did, on Monday or Tuesday when we watched recruits. He is listed as a linebacker here, but he was on 247 listed as a wide receiver. He is a pure athlete, man. So he is a guy, I think, that you can kind of tag and say, maybe we can move him around and just see where exactly he fits in. Um, I like the sound of that. Mr. Williams played some linebacker. I mean, it was mostly Quinn Perry, Josh chandler Semedo. Uh, right as the linebackers last year. Um, just trying to look up his stats real quick. Marvin Ham got some snacks, snaps yeah, into <laughs> snacks. Uh, Marvin Ham only had 10 tackles. Uh, and then who else am I looking for? Sorry. Isaac Mr. Hurtado? Uh, Mr. Williams is who I'm looking for. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. He only had 10 tackles also. So, yeah, I mean, it's a really – it's why – Signing Bentley was so huge. Yes. But he hadn't really... He was a former four-star. He hadn't really seen the field for Clemson, though. Right, right, right. He kind of got stacked behind that depth chart. So we'll see. I mean... Yeah, that's, that second level on the defense is going to be pretty green and probably need an injection of talent still. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. 
We'll see how these young guys do, though. Victory Johnson, Morgan Pearson, and then Kofi Taylor Barracks from London, England coming in. Love that. Uh, his film's pretty fun, too. Moving on to the secondary. Cornerback, Nico Reed is a dude. Um, I'd say besides Jordan Tyson, Nico Reed is, like, the surest lock for this roster. Like, guys who played last year who will play this next year. Well, and he should benefit so much from some of the the size that's added on the outside, right? Because mm-hmm. I feel like he was a bit typecast and forced to play outside corner. But Nico's one of those sticky guys that's like feisty. And I kind of like closer to the line of scrimmage in that nickel. Yeah. And now with guys like Travis Hunter outside, you can really allow Nico to play more snaps inside. And that right. could be huge. Right. Um, he was also a great returner for the Buffs, too. Um, he, I think, was their primary, yeah, primary kick returner. Had 19 returns last year. Averaged only 22.6 yards per return. Didn't have a touchdown, but man, he was this close so many times. He had so many chances. Um, if he just broke one more tackle, he would have been taking some balls to the house. Who else do we got? Uh, Nigel Bethel played decent at times. Torn Pittman, um, was playing safety, I believe. Was like kind of moved into the nickel. Okay. Uh huh. Um, Travis Hunter, of course. Um, yeah. The swing vote. Yeah, the swing vote. And then coming in as a freshman, Carter Stoutmeyer. He was committed to, I believe, SMU, then flipped to CU. Um, then young guys Joshua Wiggins and Jason Oliver also got some playing time last year. I mean, it, it's cornerback. This is Coach Prime's team. This is gonna. This is bound to change. It's bound to change. Um, you've got some nice foundational pieces. You need to add more depth, like, mm-hmm. with no doubt about it. Already the wide receiver room feels like, man, they're filling that up pretty quick. This group feels like you've, you've got more to give. You've got more to add, especially in a, on a defense that wants to play, like, man-heavy and be super aggressive and just, like, not worry about their corners, just let – trust their corners, let them do their thing, and focus on the rest of the defense, you're not quite there yet. Um, It's also worth mentioning, because we still haven't heard, people are saying Cormani McLean, but Smoke Bowie was a guy who visited uh, CU a few weekends ago. Former four-star, was at A&M last year. Um, We'll see what he decides. I mean, he's still in the portal. He's going to have to go somewhere. He's a four-star guy. He's going to get plenty of offers. Uh, We'll see if it ends up being CU. And then Cormani McLean, as everyone's saying, we'll, we'll wait and see. One of the top recruits in the country this next year would be a massive get. Yeah. Um, would Smoke. instantly change this room. Oh, I'd love both those guys. Yeah. That'd be just incredible. It'd be, yeah, it'd be great if you could get both of those. And then you have Travis also, of course. And then as someone said, Sparky Buff said, Trevor Woods leads up the safeties, was oftentimes their best player on defense. Um he plays with a lot of intensity. Like, his hair is on fire. He will uh-huh. hit people very hard. Uh, he created that PBU in the end zone against Cal to secure the win in overtime. Um, had some nice plays. He and Tyron Taylor returned. Tyron Taylor, I think, was also kind of just thrown into a role after uh, Isaiah Lewis got hurt right. early in the season. Right. He played fairly well. Uh, and then, of course, Cameron Silman Craig's coming in. Simeon Harris also played well at times for the Buffs. I believe he was also kind of a nickel corner slash uh, safety type of guy. Mm -hmm. And then Jaden Milliner Jones comes in as a recruit, three star. Um, Jeremy Mack was not great often at times. (laughs) I'm trying (laughs) to be nice. That um, would be your candidate to maybe leave the room if, uh, if I mean, were one. him and the guys that are listed at freshman, uh, Dylan Dixon. Dylan Dixon, I think, got on the field. Um, Xavier Smith and then Oweki Salave, I think. Very <laughs> I nice. Know. I love that. I don't know. He how surprised to say that. me exactly. a little bit. Um, um, Jeremy Mack, we should say, fourth leading tackler on this defense last yes, year. Yes, yes. So he was productive, at least. Trevor Woods, second. Uh, leading tackler on that defense. So um, you love to see that. I think he was also second in pass deflections behind only Nico Reed. So, like, Woods was very productive Mm -hmm. as a tackler on ball, 
Um, I'm excited for him. I'm excited at least that this group has some experience coming into the season. They're not as green as the rest of this defense. Right. But this exercise is telling me, like, the defense is a bit behind here. Yeah. Um, and on players that got tackles last year, I mean, tackles were being made. They were just further down the field than you would like them to be. Uh, yeah. Very <laughs> down the field. Yes. Yeah. Um, people are talking about Anthony Robinson, the 2023 Juco corner. Uh, there was a comment a bit above if you want to scroll up. The one above that, uh, Tiff, actually. Uh, Byron said it. Um, what happened? Honestly, man, I don't really know. Uh, he said he was committed. 247 Sports doesn't list him as a commit. Um, but he was like on interviews talking about how he committed. He may be a preferred walk-on. That's maybe why he's not actually like listed as a commit. Uh, so I don't know. We'll see about that. Um, it is surprising that Buff Stampede roster doesn't have him on here either. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like everywhere that I would go to like find trusted information doesn't have him there. So I don't know what the deal is. Um next time you see some coaches you'll have to inquire. Yes. <clears throat> on to the specialists. <clears throat> we talked about Cole Becker and Alejandro Automata Mata. Love that. There, you see it right there, guys. If you want to pull it up, Tiff, the uh the roster thing and scroll down to kickers. Alejandro's Mata, Alejandro Mata's name is italicized. So that means preferred walk on. Uh so great for stuff. all the people that were asking about that, not officially on scholarship. Cole Becker, of course, still there. There's gonna be a competition, obviously, so we'll see how that goes. Um the punter Mark Vassett comes in from Louisville, uh from Melbourne, Australia, mate. Love that. Love that. Uh I mean that's where you want your uh yeah. punters from. You know? Yeah. Uh, Trent Carrizoso was the punter last year. Um, there's a reason they brought another punter. Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. All okay. right. So Good hopefully <laughs> that kind of sets the stage for everything uh, with this roster moving forward. Before I move on, I want to tell you guys about our friends over at Illegal Pete's. Woo! We've been reunited, Dre. Let's go. I got my Illegal Pete's today. It was delicious. It was amazing. Um, you can't beat their endless option of fresh ingredients and the strongest margaritas around. Stop by one of their 12 locations throughout Colorado and Arizona for happy hour from 3 to 6 p.m. every day. Illegal Pete's is also hooking you all up with a little something extra this year. Spend $100 on gift cards and get an extra $25 for free. Amazing. Use that for yourself. Give it to someone else. Your decision. This is a good segue. Also, shout out to our friends over at DraftKings Sportsbook, yes. where it is the best place to bet on bowl season. Yeah. Uh, the action is just Facts. getting started, and we're just about to get into it all here. Yep. Right now, new customers can place a $5 pregame money line bet on any college football team to win and get $150 in free bets if they do. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use code DMBR. Uh, new customers place a $5 bet pregame money line on any college football team to win. Get $150 if your team does. That's code DMVR only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. All right, Dre. Man, the comments are always popping. They're on they it. Are. All the latest stuff. You yep, know, they're uh, the best, man. Kevin Coleman and USC going hard after them. Yeah. They're just like on top of it all. Yeah, we'll see what happens with that. Um, Kevin Coleman has been very quiet, though. So we'll see. Concern meter? Okay. Um, so when, when it, during signing day, uh, that signing day period last yeah. week, there were a handful of videos that came out on YouTube from Well Off and other accounts associated with Coach Prime. <laughs> and in the background, you can see the depth chart. Unblurred and under wide receivers, it said Coleman. But he has yet to actually commit. Okay. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Well, uh, and then the other part of this is the fact that there are two scholarships over right now. Yes. So you got to make a little room. Even these walk-ons might not even be walk-ons when it's all said and done, right? 
It's completely in flux. Oh, boy. Some real wild, wild west stuff. Completely here. in flux. We'll see how it all shapes out. People, Shiloh, Shiloh Sanders is probably going to transfer him once he graduates. Right, right. I mean. Right. Shil- yeah. He, we don't even have both his kids here yet. Yeah. And then we, dude, we haven't even hit signing day. They're going to bring in more recruits. I know. Good. It, yeah, good. And it's going to be great. It's, guys are going to leave is the point. That's the whole point of today. Guys are going to leave. I promise there will be more scholarships for players to come in. Um, Jake really wants you guys to just no, take it not easy because <laughs> guys are leaving. Okay. Guys just are leaving. Relax. Um, let's transition. Let's talk about the pack. <laughs> um pack 12 conference of champions the conference of champions oh hell yeah this article it. came out not too long ago mere moments before we went moments live. before we went live from the athletic headline pac-12 commissioner interested in possible big 12 partnership before college football expansion feud <laughs> tell me more that's interesting good stuff good here headline. um it's on the athletic as i said so you can go read it there yep yep here's a quote from george kolovkov We are open to discussing a strategic relationship with the Big 12 that could help both conferences, and we have not, and we have no preconceived notions about what would be possible or not. We think it is worth exploring. Kolovkov mentioned that he had informed, uh, who is this, Yarmok? That is the Big 12 commissioner, Brett Yarmok. Uh So he said he mentioned that he informed Yarmok that he has also had spoken with the ACC. Moves are being made. The Pac-12 has yet to announce a media rights deal. This is kind of a huge story that's just been hanging over my head the last three, four months. I know. I know. It really is huge. Yeah. Um, The Big 12 signed a new TV deal in October, November. That was massive. Massive. A lot of people were surprised by this. It was a six-year deal worth more than $2.2 billion. Um. That's the spite losing Texas and OU, huh? But they bring in BYU, Cincy, UCF, and Houston. Okay, yeah. Still, 2.2 bill. That's not That's bad. That's a massive That's number. That's uh, pretty big, yeah. And it's big because once this deal came out, rumors were the Pac-12 could get even more. Right, sure. And they're going to have less teams, less, you know, less people cutting up the pie. Not bad. It's interesting, man. So we'll see. I mean, especially if you can do things like this and ensure your long term viability a little more. Exactly. Like you really need to hold on tight to the Oregon's and Washington, right? Mm-hmm. Now. Yep. You cannot have those schools jump ship. Yep. And uh, a few weeks ago, UCLA officially confirmed their move to the Big Ten. So USC, UCLA after next year. See ya. Gone. See you later. Yeah, that'll be weird. Um, um, and of course, the alliance you hope doesn't happen is between the SEC and Big Ten, because I yes. think I mean that's why the Big Twelve and Pac Twelve <laughs> and ACC are all flirting with each other. It's because those two giants are looming over everything and already poaching the best teams from these conferences, and that's you, where everything could go wrong. Do you remember the scheduling alliance? <laughs> Yeah. It was supposed to happen. Yeah. Until yeah. the Big Ten said, nah, we're taking USC, UCLA. Forget this. We're on our own. Um, Terrible. It's crazy. Let's yeah. talk about some games. It's great stuff. Hopefully this time next year we're talking about CU in one of these games or just a bowl game in general. Absolutely. That would be nice. Yeah. Um, Washington played last night. They beat Texas. Michael yeah. Penix is a beast. Michael Penix is a beast. No Bijan Robinson, I thought, really mattered for Texas. It's kind of a rough way for Texas to end their season. I don't know, man. I don't know about this Sark thing. I think just uh, a couple years ago, Sark was supposed to be CU's. He was. Top candidate. It doesn't work out. He uses that to leverage and get a better offer. I think at the time he just stayed at Bama. Um and now I like where CU's sitting a lot better than how they got Sark. I'm not ready to sell my Texas stock yet. We got Arch Manning coming in next mm. year. Yeah, yeah. Uh. They are, if Quinn Ewers doesn't get hurt, they upset Alabama this year. And the narrative is much different. It's true. It's true. 
I'm not ready to sell. The narrative around the first three loss Bama team in a long while would have also been a lot different. That's true. Um, hmm. Interesting. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> Um, these, these comments just have me riveted. I can't, I can't <laughs> They're know. awesome. It's fun I to watch. Isn't it? Keep keep walk, lo, reading those. Um, Washington, on the other hand, that's one of the best like one year turnarounds we've seen in a long while, man. Yes. Um, which one are we talking about next? The Cotton Bowl or the Rose Bowl? You decide. Let's go Rose. Rose Bowl, Utah, and Penn State is taking place on Monday. We'll probably be doing a show while this game is going on. It starts at 3 p.m. The Utes are two-point yeah. favorites. Cam Rising is yet to make a decision, or at least announce a decision, whether or not he is going to return or go to the NFL. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I'd assume he's playing because he hasn't declared I would, too. Yet. I would, too. Um, no Clark Phillips the third. He has declared for the draft. Yep. Also, he's got a... I was back in Utah last week. He's got NIL commercials. Selling cars for some no way. dealership. Yeah. Wow. We need that in Colorado. Yeah. And Penn State should be without Joey Porter Jr., um, tight end Brenton Strange, and Parker Washington at wide receiver, mm. who've all declared. And a bit of a rotating door at quarterback the last few years, but I'm That's assuming rough. it's Clifford. I, I assume so also. Yeah. That's rough, though. A lot of good players, some of their best players, their best players not playing. Yeah. Utah two point favorites. Are we taking the Utes by a million? I think by I love Kyle Rising. I love, um, I, I love the more stable quarterback. I think their defense has picked things up a little bit, but um, you know the bigger thing is I don't trust Sean Clifford or that Penn State offense at all. Yep, I actually think Penn State's the better defense and could play them tough. I could see this being close, but this is a cl- like. Utah gets up for a Rose Bowl against 11th ranked Penn State. Right. I mean, Penn State, they'll get up for it, but they're they're just missing some of their best talent, and they, they have the lesser quarterback. I don't know what to tell you. Just go back to last year. Utah was really fired up to play Ohio State. Yeah. Um, that was a great bowl game. That was a fantastic yeah, game. Yeah, that was amazing. Cotton Bowl, Tulane. They are ranked number 16 in the country. They are taking on USC. USC are two-point favorites. Caleb Williams, of course, is playing. Um, Travis Dye got hurt early in the year. I don't know if we have any big opt-outs from USC. Jordan Addison would be the big oh, one. Oh, Jordan. And the the tackle. Um, what's his name? Uh, Veers. Yeah, almost. Something like that. A- Andrew Veers. Voorhees or something Voorhees. like that. <laughs> <laughs> He's not don't, playing. Don't put me on the spot like that. <laughs> Sorry. Um, you know, I struggle with complex names <laughs> like that. Um Tulane, one of the best teams in the country against the spread this year. Yep. And just a great story. Um, college right out of New Orleans. Great academic school, by the way. Um, but, yeah, I think USC handles business. It will be interesting. Is USC up for this game? Mm-hmm. It's been a minute since they were in this. You know, we were talking about on the draft pod, not since, like, Sam Darnold, Ronald Jones. That would have been 18. Uh, Saquon in, uh, against Saquon's Penn State Nittany Lions in the Rose Bowl. Yep. Not bad. Fun a matchup fantastic there. Fantastic game. Um, so, you know, I think this matters. I think this matters to Lincoln Riley. And while they could overlook Tulane, I think they'll stay play up to this and win out. I also think the over is really attractive here. Love that. Um, two points just isn't enough for USC. I'm taking that all day. Caleb Williams, come on. Yeah. Um, he got, like, hurt, though. In his last yeah. game, right? Do we? I know, but it's been a minute. It has been, but that's still kind of he. It really affected his game. Yes, it did. In yes, what it was did. it? The Pac-12 title game against Utah. Yeah. 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 Fair enough. Still taking him. Yes, um, by a gajillion. Before we get to your guys' questions, I want to tell you about our friends over at Breckenridge Brewery. Uh, the Broncos are very sad. They make me very sad. And feel negative thoughts. That's why I crush Broncos Country Let's Pale go. Ales. I show off that colorful Colorado legacy with the Orange Crush logo and 100% Colorado ingredients. It's been my go-to for football season. And I'm sure I'm going to need it a lot more these last two weeks for the Bronco <laughs> games. Check out their beer locator at www.breckbrew.com to find a Broncos Country Pale Ale near you. Yeah, I've never seen Jake more perturbed or 
out on the Broncos. It's really, it's kind of scary me, man. This is my, I just shake my head now. When people ask me about the Broncos and I start, I just shake my head. I don't even know what else to say. Tiff, what do we got for questions? Um, do you think CU even hiring Prime somehow helped CSU recruiting? As of a week ago, CSU had the top class in the Mountain West. Yeah, depending on the service you look at. But um, I'm not sure it impacts things that much, Travis, just because uh, like this is why Jay Norvell was hired. He's coming from a school within the Mountain West, and he just was given another school in the Mountain West, which wasn't having as much on-field success, but had newer facilities, more money to throw at coaching and stuff. So this was kind of their plan all along. This is that first full recruiting cycle. So you kind of expected them to make a splash and do better. I'm not sure Coach Prime coming to see you really factors into that much at all. No, I mean, I think that the, obviously the change started last year with the hire, but yeah. you saw it throughout this season. A bunch of guys were transferring out. It was a true culture shift. Yeah, um, right, right. They freed up a lot of scholies yes. over there. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. During yeah. the season, too. Right, right. Um, it's going to happen here, too. Was there ever an update on that five-star DB that committed to Miami, Cormani McLean? We already talked about him a little bit. Um, we talked. I put this. So he did not commit to Miami. Is well, he committed. He didn't sign. No sign. Yep. No sign. Yep. He was expected to sign last week. And we'll see him on February first. And we'll see on February first. That's it, huh? I get. Wait and see. Stay oh, tuned. Oh man. Oh. Okay. Um, did you see the new helmets that Darian Hagen posted on Twitter yesterday? Yeah, silver. The the chrome. Oh, yeah. Chrome, chrome. <laughs> Thank Just, you. Just, I mean, straight Oregon mirrored winged helmets. Like, yep, that's right. That's right. Haven't we basically seen that before? I, I was going to say, I feel like we kind of seen those before, but still. Maybe it was more of a matted, like, gray. They do have, like, a silver helmet that they wear. So, yeah. Hey, it look cool. Or a gray helmet, I guess. Oh, look cool. Shine, mm -hmm. Shiny AF. What would you pair that with most? Um, you go like all whites paired with that? or? Well, that's a good question, and I don't think it's one that I can answer because I think the uniforms are going to change quite a bit. I think Coach Prime is going to do... Coach Prime likes some jersey. He... Jersey mix-ups, huh? Jackson State once did not once last year wear the same thing twice. So wow. uh, sorry, I kind of butchered that sentence, but yeah. No, you nailed it. You, so, you, got, it, you got it right. Good job, man. Um, yeah. So I'd expect something similar. Cool. Maybe not a full redo, but I'm sure that we'll. Uh, we already saw the helmets. There's got to be more coming. Right, and they've always had some good mix-ups. Now they'll just yeah. have to commit to it full blown. I will say that seeing Shador in the full whites. That, that's such a clean look. Yeah, yeah. It's it so good. It is, no doubt. No Last doubt. question from Dwayne Blackman. Why were the coaches slamming chairs in the locker room? Is that a tradition? <laughs> Am I missing something? <laughs> what a great question. You're all on your own here, Jake. I, I don't know what he's talking about. What? <laughs> oh, is this a prime video thing? Is it a prime video thing? Because if it is, I haven't watched yet. Right. Monday. 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 Come on, guys. <laughs> Coach Prime on Prime. Yep. Monday, yeah, we'll talk about it all. On prime time, yeah. Uh, maybe we table that one until then. Um, that's it. That's it for 2022 DMVR Buffs podcast. Wow, amazing! What a year! Great stuff, man! Congrats. Thank you, bro. Thank you. Congrats. It's been, it's been a grind. It's been a Absolutely. lot of fun. Absolutely. Absolutely. Very yeah. highs and very, very high highs and very low lows. I love that. I love that for you. And 69 likes. So you love that. <laughs> nice. It's a great way to end the year. And uh, yeah, man, thank you all for tuning in. Thank you, Jake, for yeah. uh, steering the ship, man. It's yes, been, sir. It's been great to see. Let's smash that like button on the way out. Um, we'll be back Monday, guys. We'll be here to talk about the documentary. I promise. <laughs> uh, Let's go. Till then. Let's go Buffs.